Hello, I am Dr. Anand Uthure, Kidney Stone and Laser Specialist of Raja Fortis Group of Hospitals. And today, I am going to share my knowledge on kidney stones. So let's understand what is this kidney stone. Kidney stones are the crystals which are coming down into the kidney, getting concentrated and once they get concentrated, they grow in size and they form kidney stones. About this kidney stone, let's understand this fact that 1 million cases, new cases are formed every year which require some kind of treatment all over the world. 1 in 10 men and 1 in 35 women will always have a kidney stone at least once in their lifetime. And any stone which is more than 4 mm will have about 10 to 20 percent chance of spontaneous expulsion. So whenever the stones are formed, if it's a bigger stone more than 5 to 6 mm, it is a very good idea to go to a physician and do something which requires to be treated. Now these stone problems are there with mankind for a very very prolonged period of time. The first stone was detected in Egyptian mummy at El Emra about 4800 years BC ago. That is approximately 6800 years ago. This is what the documentary evidence we have about the stone. So this stone problem is there, is going to remain and is going to be remain more in future. Why it is going to form that way? That's what we're going to see in my next talk. Whenever there's an increased dietary intake of various substances, red meat intake, calcium supplementation, excessive calcium supplement in the form of when you don't require calcium, if you start taking the calcium, these stones are formed. In India, the commonest form of stones are calcium, calcium oxalate stones. Urinary tract infection and vitamin A deficiency also can lead to these kind of stones. One of the most important reason why the stones are formed is poor water intake. This is what we call it as a saturation and super saturation of molecule theory. Now just imagine 4 teaspoonful of salt. If you put it into a small glass of water, what is going to happen is this is going to remain at the bottom of the glass. Now if you transfer this full glass of water into a bucket full of water, what is going to happen is the, all the salt is going to get completely dissolved. Same is the mechanism as far as the kidney stones are concerned. When the kidney stones are formed, whenever you have a bit of less of water, you can form kidney stones. Is that all what is there as far as kidney stones are concerned? Definitely not. There are various stone belts in interior of Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Kutch in Gujarat, where the trace element contents of the, of the, of the drinking water is so high that even if you drink a lot of water, there is still stone formation. The stones are of various types. They have various chemical compositions. The commonest in India, more than 80% of the time, is calcium oxalate uh, stones, which are calcium oxalate monohydrate or dihydrate, which are formed because of increased intake of calcium and sometimes because of various disorder like hyperparathyroidism. The second most commonest cause is uric acid stones, which are because of purine intake in the body, commonest being the red meat and a common condition called as gout, where there is a uric acid mechanism which is at fault because of which the stones are formed and they get lodged into the kidney. The third commonest cause is infection. In the infection, the stones are formed which are called as two white stones. The commonest symptom with the patient comes to us is pain. Now this pain can be a very excruciating pain and it is described as the second most worst pain only after a delivery pain. This is associated with nausea, vomiting, blood in urine which we call it as hematuria, fever, fever with chills and sometimes it can lead to acute renal failure. Now this pain is usually described as loin to groin pain that is it starts in the upper part of the abdomen and goes towards the penis or the tip of the urethra. But this can be localized pain or it can be with urgency, frequency and sometimes retention of urine if the stone has come down into the lower part of the ureter. So whenever you come across any kind of pain which is going to be a severe kind, always immediately do a sonography kidney ureter bladder region so that you come to know where is the stone, if at all there is a stone and how to treat the stone. When the patient comes to us, we do simple investigation like few blood investigations and urine test to come to know what exactly is happening with the kidney system. Along with that, we get it done nowadays, which is called as a spiral CT scan, which is available all throughout India, everywhere. Now, this will give us a definitive diagnosis of where the stone is, how big is the stone, and what is the density of the stone. Now, the density of the stone is a very important factor because that is what, what is going to determine what kind of a laser treatment we are going to offer. 
So for us, urologist, the gold standard today for any kind of kidney stone investigation is spiral CT scan. Now coming down to management part, as I already mentioned, the best thing to do is to prevent these stones. And how do we do that? We need to do that by drinking a lot of water. And that water should not be drank at one time. You should have one to two glass full of water every one to two hours, such that your urine output is more than two liters. If you are in hot climate, it should be two and a half to three liters. Now, how will you know whether it is two liters? You have to look at your urine and you have to see it is either white or pale yellow. Whenever it is concentrated or it is dark yellow, that is the time you have to understand this fact that you are having a bit of dehydration, you need to drink a lot of water and you need to decrease the concentration of the urine. When the concentration of urine decreases, the chances of stone formation becomes less. In the general measure, in the dietary intake, you have to have milk and milk product, not more than two glasses a day. You have to restrict your calcium supplementation. You should increase the dietary fibers in your body so that the calcium absorption becomes less. And meat, red meat, content should never be more than 240 grams per day. In the dietary restriction, Tomatoes, spinach, pumpkins, chocolates, tea, coffee, strawberries, these are the ailments which cause kidney stone formation. So you don't need to stop this, but you should have a dietary restriction onto this. The treatment option which is there is medical ion treatment. When the patient comes in, we give pain relief injection and we do something called as a surgical ion treatment. Now, while doing the surgical ion treatment, you have to always understand that the recurrence rate for any kidney stone is 7% per year. That is, 50% of all the stone, all the patients will form reform stones in 5 to 7 years' time. So, whenever we are going to offer any kind of treatment, it should be a minimally invasive or non-invasive treatment. Now, invasive means a treatment option which is going to cause some kind of a damage to your body. So, whenever we are doing any kind of treatment nowadays, we do not have any cut or stitch on the body. We don't cut, we don't stitch, we don't go inside the kidney to take out the stone. We do everything through minimally invasive shockwave lithotripsy or we do something called as a laser treatment. Now when we talk about ESWL, it is not a laser treatment but it's ultrasonic waves. These ultrasonic waves go into the body, they focus onto the stone, they break the stone and make it into a powder form and then they clear it off. The only problem with this ESWL is that when the stone is more than 850 house field unit, which we find out on CT scan, the clearance rate becomes less. In that particular case, we need to use something called as a laser. Now, what is a laser? Laser is a light amplification of stimulated emission of radiation. So when it touches any part of a, 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 a body, it will burn that part. So what we need is we need a medium. Now that medium is in the form of scopes. These scopes are the tubes through which we reach various parts of the kidney through which we insert this laser fiber, which goes and touches the stone, touches the stone, breaks the stone and makes it into a powder form so that it can very easily be taken out. The principle is it should be broken for less than two millimeter in size so that it can very well easily be taken out. As far as kidney stones are concerned, we do something called as PCNL. We make a very small half a centimeter hole in the skin, go inside the kidney and break the stone. If the stone is in the ureter, that is a tube which is there between kidney and bladder, we go inside with the tube, look at the lasers, break the stone and make it into powder form. And similar is the bladder stones. One of the latest technique which is available today is called as flexible ureter endoscopy. Now this flexible ureteroscopy is also called as RIRS. RIRS is retrograde intraoral surgery. With this, we can reach any part of the kidney. However big is the stone and however the hard is the stone, we can try to give a 100% clearance to the patient by utilizing this, this modality of treatment. With this, I would like to tell everybody that my take home message would be the best form of kidney stone management is prevented.